to take just a little time just now to have a look at a uh, question which relates to uh, collisions and uh, momentum and uh, conservation of energy. This is a question that links to the Our Dynamic Universe unit uh, within the CFE Higher Physics. And it talks about two rugby players that are uh, coming toward one another. One rugby player has a mass of 110 kilograms um, and the other one has a mass of 85 kilograms. Uh, the forward, the 110 kilogram guy, is traveling at 5 meters per second, and the, the back, the 85 kilogram guy, is traveling at 7 meters per second in the opposite direction. They collide, they stick together, um, and the questions are calculate the velocity of the pair immediately after the collision and show whether the collision is elastic or inelastic. So that's what we're going to try and solve um, just now. I've redrawn the, the picture uh, so that it looks something like this. It just helps us um, visualize what's going on. Uh, I tend to like to do this, to have a situation where we've got before the collision, uh, the yellow guy is our 110, and these are my spherical representations of rugby players. Um, he's 110 kilograms, he's traveling at 5 meters per second. He uh, travels into the guy that's uh, 85 kilograms moving in the opposite direction at 7 meters per second. Now we are told in the question to treat the, um, the direction that this guy is moving as positive. And so when we say that this is our initial velocity here, what we really need to think about is that this is a positive velocity. So I'm just going to write that in uh, there. And therefore this is a negative velocity. And so that's very important. This direction here is positive. And so we need to think about that uh, throughout the entire rest of the calculation. So the first question, calculate the velocity of the pair after the collision. So we need to think about this from the point of view of conservation of momentum, uh, which states that uh, momentum is always conserved. The total momentum of the system before the collision is equal to the total momentum after the collision in the absence of any uh, external uh, resultant forces. So uh, the formula that we would normally use, and I'll just change my pen color, uh, it goes something like this. M1 times U1, that's the momentum of uh, the yellow guy, plus M2 times U2, that's the momentum of the red guy, is equal to the momentum after the collision. And because they stick together, we can add their masses. And that, in this case, that's M1 plus M2. And we'll put that in brackets, multiplied by the velocity after the collision. And that's just one velocity because they're both sticking together. So we can apply this formula now. That's the formula uh, for conservation of momentum. And we'll solve it down here. So M1 is 110. Uh, U1 is 5. So that's the momentum of the yellow guy. And we're going to add to that the uh, momentum on this side, which is 85, the mass, times minus 7. And it's minus 7 because it's moving in the opposite direction. So that's the momentum after the collision. And that's equal to uh, the uh, total mass after the collision, which is 110 plus 85 um, multiplied by the velocity after the collision. And that's what we're trying to find out. So now we're going to do these uh, sums and uh, solve the problem. So um, 110 times 5 is 550. And we add that to the momentum um, of the red guy, uh, we get minus 595. And that's equal to the total mass here, which is 195 times the velocity of both men after the collision. So if we add these two together, uh, we get a total uh, momentum before the collision of 45 uh, kilograms meters per second. And that's equal to the momentum afterwards of 195 times V. And so we can easily now solve this problem for V. Uh, v is uh, minus 45 over 195. And that means that the um, velocity of both guys uh, stuck together after the collision is minus 0 0.23. Sorry, decimal point is not visible. Um, meters per second. And that means, because it's the minus sign, that means that they are moving to the left. So that's equivalent to a speed of 0 0.23 meters per second um, left. And so that's the problem solved. Well, it's the first part of the problem solved. So now we need to think about the um, collision and whether the collision is elastic. 
um, or indeed inelastic. So we're thinking about these two words. So let's just clear some space. Hopefully you understood that problem, but uh, we can't solve the problem without um, clearing some space. So I'll just uh, erase all of this. So um, we need to think about whether the collision is elastic or inelastic. An elastic collision is one where um, the kinetic energy is conserved, and an inelastic collision is one where the kinetic energy is not conserved, where some energy is lost as heat. And more often than not in collisions um, of a large scale like this, some kinetic energy is indeed lost. So uh, now that we've cleared our space, we can have a think about the second question. So um, we'll think about the, moment, the momentum, the energy before the collision. So we've got two kinetic energies to consider. We've got the kin kinetic energy of the yellow guy uh, so I'll just call that EKY um, plus the kinetic energy of the red guy. So we'll call it EKR. And that's um, half uh, times M1 times U1 squared plus a half times M2 times U2 uh, squared. So that's the kinetic energy before the collision. We want to compare that with the kinetic energy after the collision. And the kinetic energy after the collision is um, equal to the total mass, uh, which is the half of the total mass, which I'm going to say is just m1 plus m2, uh, times the velocity uh, squared after the collision. So we're just going to fill in all the numbers here now and uh, see what we get. So on the left-hand side, that's a half times the mass of 110 times the velocity squared, which is 5 squared. And we add that to the kinetic energy of the red guy, which is half times 85 times uh, 7 squared. Now we don't need to worry about the minus sign here, because when we square minus 7, we get the same as if we square plus 7. So we're going to figure out what this is, and we're going to compare it to the kinetic energy after the collision, which is a half times the total mass of 110 plus 85. Uh, times the velocity um, squared after the collision, and remember that was 0 0.23 squared. And again, we don't need to concern ourselves with the minus sign. So let's do both of these calculations and see what the answer is. Okay, so on the left-hand side, we've got um, 1,375 plus um, 2,000 and 82.5, which gives us a total kinetic energy um, before the collision of 3,458 joules. And after the collision, uh, when we do this sum, we get a total energy of 5.16 joules. And that is a absolutely dramatic difference. Um, well, kinetic energy has, without a shadow of a doubt, been lost, no doubt, as heat, and probably, for two rugby players, an awful lot of sound as well. So this is a inelastic collision. Okay, I hope you, help, uh, you find that helpful in understanding how, one, both to solve questions, to determine uh, using conservation of momentum, the velocity after a collision, and two, how to determine whether the collision is elastic or inelastic.